how can we create a strong learning community that builds upon and increases our inclusivity and sense of belonging within an online learning environment? This was a question we asked ourselves before we dove into this project. As we know, learning communities can help foster that sense of belonging and inclusivity, which can uh, create more determination and motivation. So let me explain to you how we did this and uh, who we are. So my name is Jacqueline Edmondson. I am uh, the Moodle lead at Good Learning Anywhere, as well as an adult educator. We are an online uh, not-for-profit organization funded by the Ontario government in Canada. We are an Employment Ontario initiative, and we are the lead Indigenous stream um, uh, service providers. So we focus on our northern and indigenous communities, uh, but we do have free and online courses available for uh, adults across the province. We have an ongoing intake, so anyone who is interested in upgrading their uh, employment or their um, education or even just independent schools, they can come and take our courses. We have uh, both synchronous and asynchronous options. Um, but we really focus on mentorship. So our mentors, in our case, are our educators. We have been using Moodle for over 15 years now, and uh, we love creating our courses within there, especially for um, trying to build that community aspect. So what was the problem? Why did we d dive into this project? Well, in our case, we had too many contacts at one point, so it wasn't, it, it was more difficult for our learners to reach out who, to who they wanted and ask the questions and get those deeper connections made. Um, therefore, we weren't able to have those meaningful connections with our learners, but as well as between themselves, right? They weren't as comfortable. So in our case, what we wanted to do is we wanted to increase that sense of belonging. We wanted to make sure that they felt uh, those meaningful connections and we wanted to dive into how we could do this. So this is kind of what it looked like before as a diagram. Um, so we did have mentors. However, they were more of our generalized, um, for generalized questions and whatnot, kind of acted more like a, uh, like a course, um, like they would tell you what kind of courses you might be interested in, like a guidance counselor in a way. Um, however, we did have instructors for every single course and they would get in contact with the learners as well. So there were a lot of different people in contact and uh, our learner <laughs> didn't really get that sense of belonging. So what we did instead, and this was the first part we needed to do to create these communities. We needed to make sure that that learner felt comfortable, that that learner felt like they belonged, that they could reach out and um, ask the questions that they may, may have needed. So we have now our mentor is more of the, taken on more of the educator role. So the mentor now will take on all of the courses for that learner. It's very learner focused. Therefore, we're able to make this next step that I'm gonna talk about. But if a, if a learner had a question that the mentor wasn't able to ask, then that's when we would have our course support and the learner would not need to reach out to someone that they didn't feel comfortable with. So we came up with Mentor Role 2.0. This was the first step in order to create these communities because we were able to start using cohorts more than just with um, you know, the syncing, syncing options. So what this did was, it because uh, we were using the teacher roles previously, what this did was it allowed our mentors or our educators to have access to all of our active courses. So we limited the roles, um, the permissions for it. So it's a limited system role and they can access all of the courses and focus in on that learner and check their progress, check, check their, um, you know, their responses and whatnot and make those grading, that, uh, grade their activities, I should say. So that gave more autonomy to our mentors. That was the really important step to make before we could focus in on creating those communities. So what we did was we created communities per mentor and they're kind of like community courses. 
they act as a central hub for both our learners and our mentors. And this was a big step because we needed those cohorts to make this possible. So the central hub, in, when it came to our mentors, they could go in, they can check on the learners with, it, it kind of shows like a roster within uh, the participants option. And they can easily click on the profiles of each learner, see what courses they're taking, and um, access all of the forums and whatnot from this way. As well as, it's a central hub for learners. Not only does it provide different resources and information about our, our program, but it provides uh, an area where they can introduce themselves, uh, meet other learners, and they can partake in topic discussions, um, whether it be course focused, or sometimes we even have something more fun in there that we can just get some engagement going. And it builds that comfort with not only the mentor, but also all of the learners who are within that cohort. Um, so we have those asynchronous options through the forums, but we also have the meeting rooms, and this is for the more synchronous options. So we have one-on-one -on -one options uh, where mentors and learners can meet one-on-one -on -one if there's any specific questions. Um, and then we also have the meeting rooms that they can meet as a group. And um, this has opened up so many different opportunities for engagement within our, uh, our platform. So how did we make this work? Well, we needed to reach out. It was something we were working on for years. We really wanted to figure out how to do this. And um, we ended up working with a, a few different partners. Um, one of our partners is actually in the room here uh, with Contact North. But uh, so we worked with a few different partners, we got some ideas and we kind of took pieces of everything. It, and that community aspect is huge in this case. And we figured out, okay, how can we make this work uh, without using a lot of plugins? We didn't want to overdo it. We didn't want to rely on something that uh, could break, you know, and um, so we wanted to try and keep it as close to core Moodle as possible. So what we did was we used the, that cohort sync and the co ho cohort sync with the profiled field cohort membership is really key to this because it is, as soon as that learner account is created, they're added into the cohort and immediately they have access to the community courses as well as the digital t intake assessment and anything else that we um, want them to have access to immediately. The cohort text boxes is, is key as well because we have a lot of our courses that are gonna have different learners in them. And because we want it focused on that mentor, that key point of contact, those, these cohort text boxes allow us to have it so um, the learners, when they go into their courses, it's always gonna bring them back to their mentor, to the community course, or any specific details that we want that cohort to have. For the community courses themselves, uh, we wanted to make the view of it a little different. So we didn't want it to be a typical course that they would go into and have to scroll through to find the details that they're looking for. So the grid theme that we used was key for this because it was what gave us this layout where we could uh, have the boxes available and they can click on it and it pops up with that information that's of importance to them. And then, of course, forum discussions, as you know, they are key in this for our asynchronous options. Um, but Big Blue Button is what we used for our synchronous class, um, not just classes, but our, uh, our meeting rooms. So for one-on-one -on -one and as a group, um, we can use the meeting rooms through Big Blue Button. So our outcome, uh, right now it is still a pilot. We have uh, been doing it for about two months and we've had a lot of great feedback from our, lear uh, our learners and our mentors. Um, we've been seeing a lot more discussions. We've been seeing people open up about things that we may have not necessarily had them open up about before. Um, we have been getting more uh, you know, diverse perspectives in our discussions that we didn't necessarily see as much previously because uh, in our courses, they didn't have those, those connections, right? So sometimes people didn't want to open up about certain things. And, um, and we also have uh, more autonomy and creativity for our mentors. Um, 
our mentors are in control of each of their own community courses. So um, they, they can always check back, they can update as needed and make it their own. And, uh, and then we have more focus on the, the learner needs. So what, if, what are our next steps in this case? Well, we wanna continue to explore different ways that we can enhance our community courses. Um, we wanna co continue to collaborate with both our mentors and our learners, get feedback from them, see how we can improve on it. We're here because we wanna also learn more about how we can improve these two and uh, also expand on our accessibility tools within our program as well. And I wanna thank you for, uh, for your time today. Um, I look forward to networking with you all. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. I have some curiosity around how, it, this may be going into the details, but you had the cohort sync, which is just to keep everybody together, yes. but you also had the profile cohort membership. Could yeah. you speak more to what that exactly is? Yeah, so uh, the cohort field, um, or sorry, the profile field cohort membership, it, it allows you to change um, or add a manual piece to your, the profiles. So as soon as uh, an account is being created, it allows us to choose which cohort to add them to. And we have them all titled by the mentor names. Um, so we choose the mentor that they're gonna be associated with, which automatically, as soon as that account is saved, it immediately will add them through the cohort sync into the community courses, um, as well as our digital intake assessment. So it's automatic. Um, once they're done, then it's a, it's, a, it's a quick click of a button where uh, when we're getting them out of that cohort, we go back into their profile and uh, we change it. So it's, it's pretty quick and easy. And um, it's actually made it pretty convenient, effective, yeah. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> okay. Hey there. <clears throat> um, do you, uh, so in, in the way you've changed the approach to how you address learners and, and whatnot, has, uh, do you think it's improved the retention of your learners and uh, like their overall completion rates of the courses and such? Right now, we don't have any statistical information on that, but in regards to people opening up and telling uh, their mentors, you know, this might be affecting my progress right now and whatnot, we've been seeing that a little bit more. Um, I myself as a mentor, uh, um, I've been seeing that more as well, where people are opening up about that. And um, because of that being opened up, there is more people who were giving, you know, were able to say, okay, we understand that that's going on, so let's work with you, you know, let's make sure that you get uh, this course done successfully, and um, it, that has been helping, yeah. All right, thank you. <clears throat> 